What's up everybody, my name is Celica and welcome back to Monster Loves You. In the last episode we were able to be born and go on a few adventures of our own. Um, so uh, let's just go ahead and jump into it and, re uh, and continue playing. Let's see if we have any other adventures we can go on. We have a few, but let's go ahead and review our skill sets. Alright, so we got... So as far as our skills go, we have a bunch of bravery, but we actually have more kindness than we do bravery. Huh. Anyway, we have a bunch of bravery, some, like, a little bit of cleverness, not a lot, a bunch of ferocity, a little bit of honesty, and a lot of kindness. Now, we were able to actually save a guy from drowning before, we were actually able to help our friends out in a whole bunch of situations, so of course we're going to be kind. Choose our adventure. Let's see here. Let's go with the shield, because we're pretty brave. Smark falls from a high ledge. He falls all the time. But wait, what's that? It's a big bat trying to knock pieces out of him. Oh no! Try to separate them without hurting either. Tackle the bat before Smark is hurt, or cheer for the bat. You know what? I like my friends. I'm hungry, I'm gonna tackle the bat. You tackle the huge bat with all your strength. It crumples like paper and sticks crushed by the solid impact. You and Smark share the tasty bat carcass. Awesome, nice. All right, oh my, you wake up and find that you're no longer a monsterling. You're growing up. Wow! Elder Marinus calls the oldest monsterlings to gather in a group. You're one of the oldest ones now, so you should join them. She looks grave. Uh, I don't want to lower my bravery, so I'm going to go with her. Marinus snuffles down the long tunnel, turning this way and that among dozens of forking passages. Well, I think there's only one option. Marinus stops in a warm, humid chamber with a pit in the floor. She points to the pit, which seethes with thick mist. Um, do we want to jump in or wait for her to make me go? I'm going to jump right in. You fall and fall some more, and fall, and you're falling, and other monsterlings are falling, yet some of them are crying, and you can't see through the mist. Or is it fog? Maybe clouds? Moans and groans and whispering screams? Where is this? It must be somewhere. You land on smooth, flat stone. Despite the swirling vapor, the floor is dry as bone. Hey, that's a rhyme. You land on smooth, flat stone. Despite the swirling vapor, the floor is dry as bone. <laughs> nice. We can make a freestyle out of that. Although I'm white, we can't freestyle. You hear other monsterlings breathing nearby. Some of them are still above you, still falling. Get out of the way. Try to cushion the fall for another monster. You know what? I'm going to cushion the fall. Oof. You don't see who, ha who you helped. Whoever it is rolls away into the thick fog without a word. Guess gratitude's not important. I would have appreciated a thank you. You rejoin some of the monsterlings at the edge of the mist. There are more passages out of here than you can count. Some monsterlings begin to panic while others look determined. You should take charge or maybe someone should lead. You know what? I'm going to take charge. It's my pack of monsterlings. The other monsterlings watch you curious. Lead the way personally. Slash the others to show them you're in charge. Help everyone work together. I'm going to lead the way personally. Well, you're doing this my way, and if you don't like it, I'm going to slash you to pieces and eat you because I'm hungry. You strike out with courage and confidence. The other monsterlings follow you, choosing turns and forks at random. You soon walk into a cave full of even thicker mists. Such thick mist. The chamber swirls with mist, smoke, fog, vapor, except it's not any of those things. It's ghosts. Hundreds of them, large and small. They're everywhere. Spooky. One by one, the pale ghosts begin to turn their attention toward you. Their eyes glow different colors. Cringe a little, I guess. The ghosts speak in many voices, all hollow and distant, all in unison. They ask you, do you fear? You know what? I'm going to say nothing. I'm just going to wait here. I don't, I don't fear them. I'm not a feared. I ain't a feared no ghost. The ghosts stare into and through you as though you're the one made of mist. One sharp voice speaks from behind you. Why are you here? 
Lectures the ghosts about the monster life cycle. Attack them or bide your time. You know, I'm gonna bide my time. I'm just gonna let them be. Small ghost coils around your foot like a cold, wet snake. The ghost moans. <laughs> Will you lend us some of your blood so we may go on? I'm gonna let him take my blood. You know, every monster counts, and if you're a ghost, you know what? You can have. You can be a ghost. The ghost draws closer. The ghosts draw closer and closer, unraveling their bodies into ropes of fog like the tentacles of some great clammy squid. Their eyes grow dim, and you think you see fangs. Oh, great. I'm gonna watch them and stop them if they take too much blood. You get ready to back away if necessary, then realize they're all around you, binding and drinking. You feel dizzy. Fall down unconscious, I guess. Oh! Oh, okay. I thought I was dead. No, I'm not dead. I'm just not a monsterling anymore. 87% bravery. 5% cleverness. 42% ferocity. Um... 3% honesty, and I guess that's 60% kindness? I don't know. You wake up inside a well-appointed hovel. This is your home now. What should you be doing now or start living as an adolescent monster? I'm gonna ask the question, what should I be doing? The more brave, clever, ferocious, kind, and honest you are, the more other monsters will grow to respect you. Gain enough respect, and you might someday affect important world events. Alright. I can do that. You wake up inside a well-appointed hovel. This is your home now. Start living as an adolescent monster link. What is this? The top bit shows how many days you have left until your next stage of life, and the bottom shows how much respect you have amassed. Zero points out of a total of 100. What's respect? Impress other monsters, and they'll talk about how amazing you are. The more respect you gain, and the earlier stages of life, the greater power you'll wield later on. Gotcha. All right. Enter the big bad world. It's the only thing I can do, so let's do it. Adventure into town. Once again, only thing I can do, so let's do it. Let's go ahead and choose the human again. Because you Nash Nash, you Nash Nash and Gobclaws hide in a stand of prickly thorn bushes, watching human children run back to their bus. But what's that they left? Shiny red round things. It's a scooter. Mine. Battle Nash Nash and Gobclaws for it. Firsties, race to the scooter to claim it. Firsties! You all charge out of the bush only to trip over each other and land in a pig pile of feathers, scales, and fur. Now what? Mine! Kicking the others in the face, you lunge toward the scooter only to be tripped at the last second by Nash Nash. She scoots away laughing at you. Okay. What's this one? Blots waddles over to you. I'm all out of snacks. Got any to spare? Regard Blots for a moment. Blots is tiny. In the right light, one could easily mistake him for a squirrel. His neck is especially flexible from looking over his shoulder so much. He's Nash Nash's best friend, which means she constantly attacks him. Tell Blots you won't help him. Or give Blots. I'm going to give Blots a snack. He seems like a cool guy. Blots grins. That's great. Thanks so much. He waddles away, munching on a bitter beef. Okay. What's this one? Outside your house, Nash Nash charges from a nearby bush and sends you tumbling. Challenge! She screams at the top of her voice. It's on. Leap at her and crush her. Dang, that's dark. Square off and wait for Nash Nash to make a mistake. Take turns slapping each other or to decline your challenge. You know what? I'm going to square off and wait for her to make a mistake. There! Nash Nash swings and misses. Take your shot or wait for a better opportunity. I'm going to take my shot. You lunge forward and knock her out. The day is yours. You look around proudly, but nobody noticed your little scuffle. <laughs> oh. Okay. Venture in town. Let's get in another battle. You hear screams, shrieks, and cheers as you come running. The oldest monsterling is fighting a challenger. Even the elder monsters flee to a safe distance. They know this could turn out badly. 
Who's fighting? Everyone knows and fears the power of the oldest monster, except apparently this big purple guy you've never seen before. Oh! You hear screams, shrieks, and cheers, and you come running. The older monster is fighting a challenger. Watch closer and learn. You're the closest monster to the fight. The purple monster has 16 thick, ropey tentacles, and he's trying to strangle the oldest monster. That's close. The oldest monster ignores a grip that could, and does, shatter a hovel. Get closer! You move just a little closer, ignoring the shouts from behind you. The oldest monster swings. The purple guy by his ten uh, swings the purple guy by his tentacles, and you're in the path of the great bruised body. No! Marinus shrieks as the purple guy uproots a tree. The two great creatures square off again. Giant hamrag squeals. Get out of there, you fool! Elayla gasps and hides her face. Oops. Marinus puffs herself up and rolls between the fighters like a great spiny boulder, trying to grab you and pull you out of there. Oh. The oldest monster's tail twitches, barely, and Marinus is knocked away like a ball, deflating and bleeding. Run away! You get two steps before the purple challenger snaps you up in his jaw. Just before he can chew, the oldest monster rips his head clean off and hurls it away. Stand tall. Oh. I lost cleverness there. No, you nearly poop yourself out of fear, and now nobody will meet your eyes. Aww. All right, let's this one. You, Nash Nash, and the scape, uh, scrape goat are having an impromptu picnic in the street. The fresh moss you drunk in your tea is delicious. Some birds twittering and chirping in a friendly way circle and land among the crumbs. Okay. The birds start pecking at the crumbs, but then they start hopping onto you and pecking at you, too. You have crumbs on you, and they want them right now. See how they like it. Eat the birds. I'm hungry. They ruined my picnic. You grab a bird and try to gobble it up in one bite. Unfortunately, your mouth isn't yet big enough, so you end up having to eat it in multiple bites. Messy. Nash Nash laughs as your blood as your bloody jaw creaks and grinds. Crunch. The scrape goat looks on and nibbles some grass and the last of the bread. You offer it a wing, but it shakes its horn head. Nash, nash, and you keep biting birds until they're all dead. Okay, well that was a boring adventure. What's this one? Teeth? What about teeth? As you're walking down the street, you feel a stinging sensation. Something just bit your foot. Get it off! When you look down, you see a small pile of human teeth in a small wire mesh bag. Some monster must have dropped them. Human teeth? They're teeth from baby humans. Some monsters collect them and play a game with them, like marbles, right? When you look down, you see a small pile of human teeth in a small wire mesh bag. Blah, 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 blah. Ignore the teeth. Sometime later, you see Hamrag crouching on the ground searching for something. Ah, well... He was looking for the teeth. I should have clicked on a different option there. That was my bad. Elder Marinus leads you, Blistry and Virok, into the forest. She points to a stand of purple berry bushes and says, Eat your fill, little ones. Ask her what this is about. Marinus smiles down at you. I noticed the berries were ripe. That's all. What are you afraid? They'll make your tummy hurt. Elder Marinus, uh... Eat only some of the berries. I want the others to have some, too. You exercise restraint, consuming berries until you're full and no more. Elder Marinus says, it's all right. You can eat more if you want to. What she up to? Virok gorges himself on the berries, eating and eating until his skinny little body is plump and quivering. Blistery has stopped eating just like you. Yeah, what happens next? Marinus rolls Virok back into town, where the young monster is squeezed until all his slime is oozed out. The slime is purple and delicious. Is Virok okay? He's unconscious, but he seems to be no worse for the wear. Yeah, what happens is berry slime juice. Elder Hamrag makes pancakes for everyone, and the sticky purple stuff turns out to make a delicious syrup. Oh. Okay. I... Hmm... <laughs> Nothing suspicious going on there. We're just eating other monster juices.
Okay, anyway, today's a holiday, poke the bear day. Monsters have been planning pranks for days. You all head out to the bear caves. Poke the bear day, what's that? Let's do it. Let everyone else get their butts kicked or not so. Let's do it. I am stupid. You join the crowd of monsters, shuffling, walking, skipping, and scuttling through the woods. Soon you have reached the caves. The bears are already outside, waiting and watching. Poke the biggest bear with your sharpest stick and fight. Confuse a bear with the with the got your nose routine. Find out if bears sneeze. I got your nose! Hey, 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 get your nose! You want a bed? No, you can't have a bed. I got your nose. Woohoo! Oh, I got your buddy's nose. Now I got two noses. Oh, you want a bed? Oh, you can't have a bed. Woohoo! The bear grabs his nose in surprise. He growls. I can still feel my snout. Then he bears his claws, which are bigger and sharper than yours. Sock him in the stomach, then run, or tickle his belly. Gucci, gucci, go! Gucci, go! The bear laughs at your tickling, says, Hey, you're all right. I just made some tea, and I think I have some crumpets around here. Come join me. The other monsters shake their heads at your non-violent approach. Dang it! I mean, I'm gaining kindness by the ass load, but ferocity is... It's going down quite a bit. Adolescence is fleeting. You have grown beyond youth and become an adult. Yes! I have become an adult! Ah, uh, it's debatable. You've been dragged from your bed by your friends and neighbors. Trying to sleep here! What? Who the where? Why now? What? Who the where? Why now? They tell you it's time to go up. You're taken into the woods. Okay. The neighbors throw you into the center of a great circle of monsters, all older than you. They whisper to each other, then look at you, then whisper some more. Get on, getting on. The monsters murmur and mutter, split, spit and snarl. They're deciding what best defines you as a monster. Yell at them to hurry up! Some of the monsters flinch when you raise your voice. It's gratifying, but it doesn't seem to make their deliberations any less deliberate. Eventually, though, they come to a decision. About bloody time! No, let me say that a little bit. About bloody time! The ring of monsters shuffles closer to you, forming a tighter circle. Elders loom over you while the smaller adults crouch low. Your surroundings grow shadowy and dark. Wait, what's happening? What do they want from me now? You seem concerned. You see concern in some of their faces, but very little respect. So what? Do I need respect to grow up? Man, get over it. You could become an adult without earning any respect, but when the time comes all too soon to become an elder, you'll dissolve and pass away without it. Oh, okay. You see concern in some of their faces, Wait for them to assign me a task. It is immediately clear to the crowd that you are very kind for a monster. So nice of them to think so. You are sent into the goat pit to groom the scrape goat. The goat is unusually unruly and angry today. That's a lot of alliteration. Unusually unruly. Let the goat freak out, then calmly groom it. I have enough kindness for it, so you let the scrape goat res uh, butt you with its horns until it's tired, then use your claws like clippers. You give it a nice trim and pick off some tasty parasites. The crowd is impressed. Um, smile, bow, and move on. End of adolescence. Here's how you're doing. 98% bravery, 21% cleverness, 73% ferocity, 3% honesty, and 78% kindness, and 1% respect. That's going to do it for this episode of Monster Loves Me. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked it, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up. Comment down below, letting me know what I can do differently. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And until next time, peace! Really? I'm going to need to look that up after this episode. I will, at the end of this episode, in my outro card, I will put a picture of that camera.